Previously on Just Cheer Elite, Faith and Deja got a taste of practice after getting in trouble off the field. Trina got those voices right after having the girls yell at the top of their lungs. And the squad learned a new dance to add to their arsenal. Find out what happens next on Just Cheer Elite. We want to get one thing, hey, understood, that you and me, me and you, we're looking good. Check us out now, L-O-O-K-I-N-G, G-O-O-D, we're looking good. Off, baby, uh, they those too big, too big. take place is it's going to be like an open conversation, an open discussion for you guys, um, especially young ladies that are juniors and seniors that's getting ready to experience the college world. This is a great opportunity for you to ask a lot of questions. taking out the time to come over. I'm Sharita Richardson. I am the founder of Black Girls Cheer. How many of y'all follow our Instagram page, Black Girls Cheer? We gotta get more y'all, should be everybody. Back in the summer, uh, well I'll say about March of last year, we were actually contacted by the documentarians for Jay-Z and Beyonce's Beyond, Beyond the Run Tour, On the Run Tour, one. And they have recorded basically what you, some of the stuff that you're gonna see um, on that homecoming thing that she's putting out on Netflix, there was a company called Home Alone Studios, and the producer's name, Ben Vogel, who has just been uh, nominated for an Emmy, contacted us about the story of what we had done with Black Girls Cheer. So we filmed this documentary. At the same time, there was a team called Dynasty Spirit Elite, Red Flames, who had gone on to compete for the Triple Crown. And at that time, no all black teams had gotten to that level. You're gonna watch the story of Black Girls Cheer. You're gonna see, does anybody know Angel Rice? Y'all know Angel? You're gonna see Angel talk about some of the things that she was doing with cheerleading. And then you're also gonna see the story of Dynasty Spirit Elite going for the Triple Crown. Being on the mat, there's an image of what a cheerleader should look like. Many people say it's the American girl. Well, what is an American girl? What does an American girl look like? How does an African-American girl fit into that narrative? It's important for girls to be authentic, for us to be our authentic selves. And a part of us as black women, black girls, um, you know, we do have a little bit of what we call the magic. I feel like I connected <coughs> with the part where it was like, if you mess up, you gotta keep going and keep fighting because you're gonna end up doing it well. I feel like I could connect when they were talking about how we're all like family when we come together and it's all fun and we all know how to push each other and I'm glad we connected because we've, we've done this for so long together and we can just push each other and work together. I can with the heart when she was tumbling and her coach told her it's all in her head. Uh, you heard, you've heard that before. I was when I was watching it, I was wondering how many things. It's funny to watch coaches watch coaches because I was sitting there like, I know. Uh, I connected with the part when that girl fell, like, cause I did that one time, I fell on my head, but then 
My sis told me to get back up and do it again, and I finally landed it. Because most of the chilling teams I've been on, it's like we didn't really connect. We just came there, practiced, talked to each other there, but when we leave, we didn't really communicate. Like, I would want to like have a bind with the children. So why do, you, why do you think that's important? Because you need to know each other. It's like, you could, you could go to practice and just cheer with them, but like, if you mess up, you getting mad at each other, you gonna go home, talk about them, then come back the next day, it's gonna start problems. You need to bond with each other to get it. I think more black people should set an example for little girls, because little girls don't wake up every day and look in the mirror and think, oh, I'm beautiful. That's not, that's not it at all. So what do you, so you all are, what age is Nine, Nine to, to seven, seventeen. So what? It, what? What? Are, what is your feeling about? Because the hair conversation always comes up every single time we go somewhere. I didn't even realize how big it was. Not necessarily how big it was of an issue because I can tell you a personal experience. My daughters cheered in All Star Cheerleading for fifteen years, and they were always one of the only black girls on their team in their school in their classrooms because of the areas that we lived in. And when where we lived, there were no black gyms. There were no one, there were none around. Especially we started 15 years ago in this area that wasn't popular. And so their senior and junior year, I snatched them up and sent them to Dudley High School. That's right. And they were like, "Oh my God, I'm black!" <laughs> they didn't even know I was black. And I was like, "You're black. Yes, you are black." And that was the first time that before that they were burning their hair out with flat iron. Like it had to be straight. It had to be straight. They wouldn't go out the house. And it wasn't until they got to Dudley that finally they were like, oh, people actually wear their hair with curls or people do this. And so it was no question after that for them that they were coming in off time to A&T. Because like I can never really do it because of like my texture and the length of it. And like I see other girls that have it like on Instagram, their like hair is like long and curly and stuff. And I was like, I wish that I could have it. But then I have to come to my senses and realize that God made me who I am and how my hair is, is who I am and it's beautiful. I'm very big on presentation. I'm very big on um, <clears throat> us embracing what we have without having to enhance it so much. I'm really big on tough skin, thick skin. It's a dog eat world out here. You got, I mean, y'all gotta be tough. And that's why like, I'm so hard on y'all. Like I know, the, the new girls, y'all, we don't know so much, but I'm really hard on them because at the end of the day, nobody owes you anything. And that's what I want them to know. Nobody owes you anything. You have to earn. You have to earn it. You have to go get it. Because if you don't go get it, somebody else is going to take it from you. And that's what I want y'all to realize as a squad. I've always been in like advanced classes, so um, and with the schools that I've been going to, it's always been I'm one of the only black students in the class, and I've always dealt with them being kind of on my back as they don't expect me to do well in their classes at all. They expect me to live down to that standard as I'm not capable of learning the material as well as the other students. And I also played softball, and I also felt the same thing. I've got put in the outfield and I've always played infield. Um, so I felt that a lot. I also grew up with you know, biracial parents, so it was always kind of half and half, so it was kind of hard to juggle that, but I kept, I kept going and I think that was my main goal. Like people say, use it as motivation, that's what I've always done. And that's what's got me here. And my goal really is to graduate early next year. And that's what I'm doing, I can't let what the teachers and the other students think affect what I'm doing in my classroom setting because it won't allow me to win. I can't win if I'm allowing them to hinder me from what I'm doing. So I keep going. So how is this being, is this your first time? Mm -hmm. You're new to the team? Yes. So how do you think being in a different situation with other girls that look like you, how do you think that's gonna? I like it a lot better being around people that I can connect with, people I can talk to. And with it being a new team, I'm really glad and open to having a relationship with each and every one of these girls. Like I wanna be able to go to them and tell them my secrets and build a family with them over this season and you know really connect with people build a sisterhood with people of color other women of color who look like me who can 
connect to me and things that we have in common. Seventh and eighth grade, I played softball, and I was pitcher, so all the eyes were always on me. And it was an all-black team, but every school we played against with was an all-white team. And every time they just, uh, they always stared at me like I was different or something. And I wasn't, I wasn't the best like at all. So like they just put me down every time. And they, there was this one particular, there was this one particular school that made chance. They were like, you're, you're, you're gonna hit a bird with your ball because they were high when I pitched. But anyways, my mom came to one of my games and she, and everybody kept looking at her like she was different because she sat on the um, she sat on the side where all the other parents were too, and they were all white. It's just like this, just this one brown girl over there, and she has a really heavy African accent because she's African. And then they just kept staring at her. And then once I got off the field, stopped pitching, I just started crying, and then that affected me a lot. And actually, this year I was gonna play softball too, but then the whole team was also white, so I just decided to come to an all black cheer team instead. My fourth grade teacher is like, she's really mean. And then, cause she like pushes us in math. Cause we're learning decimals again. Um, not again, but like. <laughs> <laughs> so do you like being with teachers that look like you? Or do you like, you like having your all black, your black teacher? It's different. So now there's only like, Three, maybe two, I don't know. And then one is really nice to me. The other, she always looks at me a certain way and I'm like, why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> <laughs> we'd be like the only black team competing. And so whenever we would like sit down for awards, we'd be like, we'd be right in the center while everyone else is around us and they're always staring at us. And like whenever they would start calling for like awards, they would do like the top 10. And we would always make it to like the top three and they would look at us in shock and they would like, they would whisper stuff about us. And so after awards, we would go back to the dressing room and like a few of the girls would be crying because they're, I don't know, it's just, it's kind of complicated. But at the end of the day, we all had our moments where we would cry about what people would say about us. And our, our teacher would always tell us that it's okay because the words that they say don't define you and you are who you are. And you just show everything out on that floor when you're dancing. They like, we're all black. So when we would go and we would walk and stuff, like they would kind of act, I won't say like, la like ghetto or ratchet, but like kind of loud. And I like we would have to tell them you can't do that because they they already got this like perspective or mindset and you can't do certain things which you would do like at a cookout or at a family reunion because it's a different setting and they'll just judge you based off what they always see and basically not what you put on the floor or what you present. I want to take a moment so we have Latia. Mm -hmm. who was a cheerleader here at North Carolina A&T State mm -hmm. University and was the captain mm -hmm. as well. So I'll add for, and you're, you also? Oh, no. Oh, okay, okay, I thought you were. Okay, I was like, oh, I was okay. in spirit. And then we also, <laughs> on the other end, have Asia, who cheered at Cheer Extreme for a while and who was one of few African-American girls on the team. So I kind of want to hear your perspective being an HBCU cheerleader and then from you being on a predominantly white team, so. Well, my HBCU experience was amazing. Um, I enjoyed all four years here at ANT. I got the experience, um, you know, the traditional and boogie style. Um, my senior year was the most important to me because um, I was trying out to be the captain of the team. And with being the captain of the team, of course, you know, I had to learn how to do a back end spring and things like that. So in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, I, I I just ain't got it. You know, that's just not me. You know, I, I just ain't, that's just something I'm afraid of. So I end up having to master tumbling um, for my senior year. And once I mastered it, it was like, I felt a part of the girls that not only were at a &T, but you know, all of the other teams that we would go and cheer against and things like that. Because to me, it's amazing to see girls of color tumble. Um, because, of course, to me, when I think of it, it's like people of not color look at us like, well, no, she's not supposed to know how to do that. So for us to know how to do it, it's like a big, oh, okay, good job. 
So my first game, I went out and I did my backhand spring. You know, everybody on the chilling team was just so excited and so amazing. Like, I, I felt great about it. I was like, okay, I can keep doing this. But, you know, as time go, went on and, you know, I got a little seasoned <laughs> age. You know, I let that rim go. But my experience at HBCU was a great experience. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, if I could go back and do it all over again, I would. And you want to talk about how many years were you in All-Star? About 11, 12 years mm -hmm. at Cheer Extreme. Well, I also started at gymnastics. I started at gymnastics, then I went to Elite All-Stars, which was also another predominantly white gym, and then I went to Cheer Extreme. And my experience with Cheer Extreme, overall, I would not have gone anywhere else. I would not have wanted to learn everything I learned, could be trained anywhere else at, other than Cheer Extreme. But there was definitely times where I felt like a little uncomfortable. We would go on trips like to Myrtle Beach or to Florida and you'd have to room with these girls and they're like, what's that? You gonna put that in your hair? Like, you got lotion? You about to put that oil on? I'm like, you're not? Like, so it's, it's definitely like a, a, a learning experience for myself. I got to understand m a different culture. like. You know, but also I think the culture of all-star cheer now is a little bit more black. So I feel like I was, cause also like she was saying about tumbling, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but I was a great tumbler. So I was, I felt like I was almost used like a showcase tool. And also as far as my choreography and dancing, I know like you guys say you dance. I was a pretty good dancer. I was a great dancer, but there were, I remember one time my coach came up to me and we were at Worlds, we were at the biggest competition, the most important competition, and she pulls me aside, she goes, you gotta do good, you gotta work it because everybody out here is waiting for that little black girl to come out and dance. And I'm like, why can't I just be that girl? Like, why? you know, I'm gonna dance, I'm gonna do what I'm supposed to do, but I, I felt like I was kind of used as a diversity tool mm -hmm. to say, hey, we're diverse, we have black girls that can do every single thing that these cheer celebrity girls are doing, but I never got that credit. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was pretty disheartening to me, but at the end of the day, my love for the sport was so strong that it kind of just didn't matter. And now that I'm older and I can go back and I look at it, I'm like, I wish I could have done more to change the way they looked at it, the way they ran it, the way the culture, of the gym, not just that gym, any gym I've been to, any gym I've worked at. Now I coach here in Greensboro at Carolina Athletics with Ms. Sharita's daughter, Victoria Lawson, and it's predominantly black, all black. But you, there's a certain way that you have to walk into this competition, this arena, not only a certain way that you should act, a certain way that your parents should act, a certain way that your family should act, because as soon as you walk through those doors and they see that team full of black girls, you're being judged. Yeah. They're not gonna be as tight. They're not gonna they're not gonna be able to flip. They're not gonna be able to tumble. Yes, they are. And watch them. Watch them. And I tell them that all the time. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks about you. You go out there, you have fun, you do the best that you can do and you leave it all on the floor, just like you said. So, I mean, I, I'm so grateful that I got to learn everything that I learned at my gym, and it was rooted in me, and now I feel like it is my duty to change the way everyone looks at Black Girls here. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. um, we started from the ground up, and I'm just happy where I am right now. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of talent, that comes in and yeah we're ready to see what they're going to bring in the near future uh, we do want to tap into more than just stump and shake because we're technically a stump and shake team um, and we do want to venture out to the all-star uh, competitions we want to do cheer sport or we want to go to beach they like to swim i don't <laughs> um, so we, we we have intent to venture out and do that and that's the part that will be the scariest for us um i've always been considered a shy very introverted person so people really view me as like standoffish or they don't like to approach me because they say i look mean or whatever 
but I've always had the opposite type of situation where people will always be like, you're too light-skinned to be considered black, or why are you wearing braids, you don't need to do that, or something like that, because um, I didn't start wearing my natural hair until high school, so people always thought I had straight hair, and so it was a shock, and it was like, oh, she has curly hair, stuff like that, so. Like, I had dreads or locks, like, before, like this. When I used to cheer on a different team, like, I would see, like, the girls with the ponytails, and my mom would tell me that I can put my hair in a ponytail, but I wanted to be different, like, with straight hair, so that's why I chose to take them out. But, like, it's just regular. Like, I don't even like it no more. I want my dreads back. Yeah. <laughs> the hair that gets praised on social media a lot is, like, I don't even know the hair type. I think it's 3A, like, the 3B, the 3C, like, everything gets praised on social media. And like, they praise our forcey hair on social media, but in society, they tease you for having it, talking about some Wakanda hair, and go back to Africa and stuff. But I don't like wearing my natural hair. I like, straight out the shower, I can't do that. This is a braid out. So I, I can't, I can't, I, I can't, I can't, I just can't wear, wear my natural hair out. And I feel like it's a thing that should be com com comfortable doing and I should be confident in doing it. But I'm just not yet, but I'll, I'll get used to it soon enough. People be like, you're pretty for a dark skin. Like, I don't understand what that's supposed to mean. Like, I look, um, no, never mind, can't speak. <laughs> if somebody were to ask you, what sport do you play? Oh, I cheer. Their first response is, cheer is not a sport. Cheer is a sport. There's many branches on this cheerleading tree. And it can be professional, it can be all-star, we got collegiate, we got rec. There's many branches on the tree. You just have to, but it all comes back to the same thing, which I think is founded in the unity and sisterhood, athleticism, beauty. The thing I love about cheerleading, I always tell people, is where, to me, athleticism meets pageantry. It's where girls can still embrace and be feminine, at the same time, be athletic and powerful and strong. So that's why I've always loved, um, it's the, the beauty of the art of, of, of cheerleading that is also a sport. That they don't recognize as a sport, but it is clearly a sport. Oh, the camera rolling. Hi, my name is Kendra, I'm not crying, and you're watching Just Cheer. Disney Channel! <laughs> Up next, Coach Tia and Trina start handing out demerits to the cheerleaders who haven't been following the Just Cheer handbook. On the bright side, we started stunting. And on top of it all, we were even invited to perform at a child abuse awareness community service event. Find out what happens next on Just Cheer Elite. <laughs> 